So this is the Mill Reef Yard, named after the horse my father trained, who won the Derby in 1971, which also is the year I was born. But if you ask my father what happened in 1971, he doesn't say that his first child was born. He says Mill Reef won the Derby. It's no exaggeration to say this horse changed my life, changed my brother's life, changed my father's life, probably changed everybody's lives associated with, with Kingsclear. And it wouldn't be the yard it is now if it wasn't for him. I mean, Dad had good success early on, but Mill Reef was exceptional. I mean, he really did set the standard um, and set a standard so high that I'm not sure any horse could, could match it. But Andrew's now got 175 horses in training. Dad never had more than 100. Um, and he's got some, you know, beautifully bred horses, um, some very good owners who are sporting and understand the game and know that it doesn't always go right. It's, there are plenty of disappointments, aren't there? But if you try and do it right and you've got a good team around you and you've got good facilities and the place feels relaxed and the horses don't get stressed, that, that really helps. It was amazing growing up here. My parents were pretty strict. We weren't allowed in the yard much as youngsters. I think I probably only ever came in twice a year. And then when I was 15, I wanted to start riding racehorses. So dad let me ride. We had a gorgeous old horse called Miller's Tail, who was by Mill Reef, so he was a son of Mill Reef. And I was allowed to ride him out with the string on the gallops. And the string is the name for the, it's basically because they all go one after the other, like a long string of horses. Um, it's essentially the name for the, the line of horses that go out. And you start, honestly, when you ride a racehorse, it's like you've been driving a tractor all your life and you get into a sports car. It's amazing the power of them, but also the, the effortless ease. You know, they, they move so freely and when they accelerate, there's all of this power that just goes vroom. And, and the hardest thing is trying to hold on to them and actually stop them from going full pelt, isn't it? I got run away with a few times on the gallops, yes I did. Always yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> This yard is incredibly historic. It's called the Ormond Yard, named after the horse who won the Derby in 1886 and by many people is regarded as the greatest racehorse ever. He won the Triple Crown, so the 2000 Guineas, the Derby and the St Ledger. He was unbeaten through his career and he was trained here at Kingsclear by John Porter. And whenever my dad had good horses, they were always put in these boxes here and there are security cameras on them and all sorts. But that's known as Millionaire's Row because the good horses go there. Lovely day like today, horses come straight in and get a wash. And just as if you've been doing, you know, exercise, you want to jump in the shower, same thing. So this yard is steeped in racing history. Um, and apart from, you know, minor alterations, essentially hasn't changed in hundreds of years. And one of the key ways you know that is firstly that it's built of brick and secondly, that with most of the stables, you've got a double wall going on. So there's a corridor between the stable and the outside wall. And that means that it stays cool in the winter. So if you, I mean, I'll tell you, the temperature change from here is about eight degrees, probably more. It's really cold in here. And this is metal and that keeps cold. And the bricks as well are very, very cold. Hello, darling, are you asleep? Um, the horses here are stabled on paper because paper isn't dusty and they can't eat it. Hello, sweetheart. It's also very quiet in these boxes, so when the horses come in here, it's switch off time. And you can stay very calm, and that's pretty important as well as keeping them physically fit. You're trying to keep them mentally relaxed as well. And particularly when it comes to a big race like the Investec Derby, they've got to handle the situation as well as the course. So you couldn't get a more difficult race course with the uphill and then the swinging downhill around Tatton Corner and the camber in the straights, which means they have to be really well balanced. But also there's a lot of buzz to the day and they've got a parade beforehand. They've got a fanfare announcing them out onto the course. That for an immature horse is a, a huge challenge. It's probably the first time for any of them that they've seen a big crowd. And crowds of people wearing big hats and colorful clothes. 
Um, you've got the, the buses, the double-decker buses on the inside of the track. You've got the fairground going on in the middle of Epsom, on the middle of the Downs. And they've got to handle all of that. So they've got to, in their heads, be pretty sensible. You can't have a horse that's going to start sweating and lose its mind before it even gets to the start. We've come out to the main gallop that's used every day for the horses and their exercise, probably only a less than half a mile away from the house. So they've had a trot, they've had a lovely walk over here and they're going to come up and they usually come up here twice. And this gallop is four furlongs long and four furlongs is half a mile. And it's just gently rising up the slope, but the beginning of it is downhill. And when I used to ride out, always get run away with at the beginning suddenly or you know first two furlongs of the gallop you're just trying to stop this horse from motoring at 100 miles an hour but it's such a wonderful feeling when you're coming up there and obviously you're going fast enough the breeze is blowing in your face and this amazing animal is moving with speed underneath you and the power of them and the fact that you physically could nowhere near control that power and yet, because the horse is a very generous animal and works in, in a team with you, it will actually want to try and please you. And that is, they're amazing animals, they really are. Because you think if they didn't want to race, believe me, they wouldn't. But they, are, they have an instinct. And, and you can see it in the field when they're young. You know, the foals will gallop around the field and one of them will try and win all the time. It's really important that the team that you have in the yard are good that you've got good riders because actually when these horses are babies it's all about understanding them. there's way more work done at home on the gallops than there is on the race course and quite often the jockey that rides them in a race might never have sat on them before so it's the riders that ride them every day that know them the best and that cope with them when they're behaving badly on the gallops or they're mucking about at the top of it and pulling too hard going up it and that's absolutely key and you can see I mean you know some of these they look like jockeys in a race. I mean, they're really, really capable, stylish, good riders, and they need to have good hands. It's a very soft surface, so you barely hear their hooves strike the surface at all. It's oil and sand and rubber. But you hear them breathing. Horses can't breathe out of their mouth. They can only breathe out of their nose. Their lung capacity is amazing. But what you don't want to hear is any thickness of wind, any sort of noises that might suggest they've got a problem with their, with their breathing. A lot of horses do end up that being the thing that stops them going fast. They've got to be able to breathe freely. They'd only get exercised once a day. They're out for about 45 minutes, sometimes as much as an hour. And obviously coming up the gallop, it's probably going to take them 50 seconds tops. And then they'll go and do it again. But if you've been on a watt bike or a, or a rowing machine or a treadmill and you try and run fast for a minute and then stop and then go again, it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> I think when you're looking at horses that have won the derby or that are going to win the derby, they've got to be beautifully well balanced. They've got to be able to float, to dance, to make sure that their body weight, which is enormous, I mean, they're weighing half a tonne, about 500 kilos they weigh, to be able to carry that on very thin legs and to be able to deal with the contours of, of the race course, you, you've got to be really agile. And I think they are supreme athletes. They've got to be sound, they've got to be fast, obviously, um, but they've got to last a mile and a half, so have an inbuilt strength and stamina. Um, I think also they've got to be really sensible. It was interesting what Dad was saying about Mill Reef. The one quality he admires about that horse more than any other, and the thing that I think he believes set him apart, was how calm he was. What an easy horse he was to deal with, the fact that it didn't bother him. You know, you could travel him anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. You could run him on any race course and any day, and he would give you his best performance. 